So um, I wish to welcome our honoured guests and thank you so much for uh, talking to us. Um, I'll introduce Tanya. Tanya Malanchuk, is that how it's pronounced? Absolutely right. Um, uh, um, you can actually explain to people, is a Ukrainian volunteer with Together Razem in the Ukrainian support hub in Blackpool Community Centre. And Tanya also works as a receptionist at a Ukrainian accommodation centre. And our esteemed minister, Joe O'Brien, is uh, the Minister for State, Minister of State for Integration, but are you still the Minister for Community Development and Charities as well? Yeah, oh, he's, you're mute. Yeah, you're okay. <laughs> I, I almost did it. I almost started speaking on mute. Um, and yeah, the short title at the moment is Minister of State, but Minister of Responsibility for Community Development, Integration and Charities. Oh, right. Oh, this has to be one of the longest ones, yeah. And Joe, of course, is a proud courtman and um, has many years' experience working in community work and, mi and in migrant rights. Um, so that's it. And it's hard to believe it's a year since the invasion and 75,000 people have fled to this country. And we, of course, welcome them. Um, but each protection, each person was granted 12 months protection and each protection has been extended now for 12 for 12 months, which is a much relief to everyone, I'm sure. So um, who would like to kick off of the speakers? The speakers will speak for about 10 minutes each and then we'll be open to the floor and you can put up your hands then. I have no problem with start if you don't mind, probably just. Okay. To uh, introduce myself, of course, um, Minister is much more uh, famous, <laughs> no need to introduce him. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I'm Tatiana, yes, uh, and uh, I came here uh, in April in Ireland. I came in April 2022. Uh, and uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for the chance to share my experience, to share a Ukrainian experience here, because uh, I think that every story like um, is very different from each other. Um, and uh, what I want uh, to start is um, that very important for me, not only that I can share um, what I want to share with you, but thank you very much that you are ready to listen to this because Ireland uh, made so a lot already, uh, but with all these discussions, uh, you just give um, evidence that you try even to improve everything you are uh, given to our people, to Ukrainian citizens. Uh, so, as I said, I'm here under temporary protection, um, and today I will try to uh, share information with you from two perspectives. From one perspective, uh, I'm a mother with a child here, uh, who actually came as everybody else in the beginning, well, on the third month of the war. Uh, from another perspective, uh, during this period, I joined uh, the team of Together Razum and uh, saw and keep seeing um, situation from another side. Uh, a lot of information is coming to this organization and a lot of information um, should be shared because it's experience, uh, this experience actually is important to, to share with people to understand uh, their uh, situation, which is uh, on places. Uh, so uh, let me please um, give several minutes to introduce uh, the Together Asm Center, uh, because regarding my own experience, uh, I can tell only uh, that I'm very, very lucky to uh, arrived and to be like to uh, be put in Cork. Uh, and all which happened uh, with me particularly, uh, starting from the beginning uh, of my arriving to Ireland is like, Probably for me, I think it's the best scenario which can happen to like I'm in a very good accommodation and uh, attendance to people who are staying there more than I think more more than 140 people of Ukrainian people in my accommodation. Uh, so people there really under greatest support of uh, staff of the hotel where I am. Uh, and uh, all help of uh, charities around, of community centers around, they are priceless. It's, it's, it's really so. 
Uh, so coming back to Together Asm Center, because um, more information I would like to share today with you is connected particularly with information from this center. Uh, so uh, just to remind you that charity organization, this charity organization was um, um, opened, like start its activity in uh, 2006, so in 2006, and initially helping uh, Polish migrants, but uh, its activity were extended to uh, Central and Eastern European um, migrants after, including uh, nowadays. Uh, we are trying to uh, provide services uh, in Polish, English, and Ukrainian, Russian language also. Some people prefer Russian to speak with, and we uh, respect like uh, people's habits, even uh, in this case. Uh, so um, we tried to focus our activity on services provided, but also there are a lot of uh, things that we tried to provide uh, support in like physical way. Um, our um, services can be divided on three different focuses. It's educational focus. Uh, so it's English classes, it's some acad academical classes, which are given to Polish people, to Ukrainian people. Some of them are online, some of them are offline. Uh, All together, it's approximately, I think seven groups now are running. Uh, and total amount of people who are attending them um, are close to 80, probably, or e e even a bit more, uh, because we will run soon one more group, um, by the way, by support of uh, Core KTB. Um, it's only if you're speaking about Ukrainian people, there are also plans to open um, English for Polish uh, people who also uh, shouldn't be forgotten uh, because mostly uh, attention is now, I understand this, is uh, on Ukrainian people. So uh, we should keep balance uh, even in this case. Uh, it's educational part. Another part is a bit, it's better to say uh, support day-to-day uh, -day needs. Uh, we have one-to-one uh, -one, uh, clinics with Ukrainian people by Ukrainian support worker. If, for example, anybody need any help uh, with the uh, understanding of uh, some processes here or how to help themselves in this or that particular situation, they can apply to our hub in Blackpool Community Center and um, help will be received uh, on one-to-one -one basis. Uh, and the third uh, very important uh, direction focus is on psychology and support. Uh, there are a lot of people who are really suffering because they don't have um, support in a way of mental health support, I should say. Uh, we Right now we are running uh, several special groups, uh, for example, support of uh, elderly group, uh, support of women group, uh, and uh, they, they, they are called uh, they are called psychologists um, psycho um, psychologists and trauma counseling uh, sometimes in groups sometimes uh, one to one um, but demand on this uh, activity of the services is very high uh, why I will continue probably after or you please advise me or you would like to keep after yes discussion about some problems which probably occur uh, on this stage like after yes after we will speak about issues after yes okay 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 uh, so what I want also to tell about <laughs> I understand you it's it's fine uh, so uh, what I want also to tell uh, we trying to uh, support people also to make their lives more. Le less stressful if everything is fine with them, if they uh, did find a job, if they uh, have already uh, English classes uh, which they attend in. We're also trying to make their leisure time more comfortable. We are running photography classes, we are running, running florist classes, uh, we are running some, we are planning to arrange Irish dance classes and Irish culture. Uh, it's only uh, a plan for uh, nearest spring and all these classes will support by Core KTB. Uh, it's a grid, it's just need to be realized. I hope this will help people to put the level of their stress down. Uh, so uh, it's 
what the main things uh, our charity organization do. And I should say that I'm very happy that people all time long answering um, on these offers, like we offer in these services and there are a lot of demand to attend them. Uh, so this is the main things I would like to underline. Uh, if not uh, touching the topic now of main issues of Ukrainian experience here. Uh, so probably I can uh, forward my role. On mute, you are on mute. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not used to, un have to having to mute myself. Um, and you, um, you can flag issues with Joe directly if that's okay, Joe, as well. Later sure, on. yep, yep. So, um, are you okay now, Tanya? I and mean, we can go to Joe and then come back. No, to no, you. no, yes, of course. If we will come back, because I really want to discuss like issues which we face here, but not to make it a mess or not put all information together, we will come back to me if you don't yeah. mind. Okay, thank Great. you very much. Great, thank you, thank you. Okay, Joe. Okay, thanks, Louise. Thanks, Tanya. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Great. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm not sure how to start this, but I, I, I think the best way perhaps is for me to talk about the role I played last year uh, in my role in Department of Rural and Community Development and maybe talk a little bit about the extra role that I've taken on this year. Um, so I'm, I'm Minister of State in three different government departments and there is actually there is there is relevance in all three of them and i'll touch on all three of them a little bit um but i suppose it it, it prime the whole ukraine situation uh came to me initially in my role in department of rural and community development and in that department i look after most of the community development side of the house and there are i suppose a couple of um programs that we run in that part of the in that part of the department that are very relevant and, ha and that have responded i think well um to the situation over the last uh, 12 years so i suppose the two standout ones would be something that's called and i'm going to try to minimize the acronyms here now tonight it's it's sicap it's the social inclusion and community activation program uh, in cork city it'll be run by cork city partnership so Cork City Partnership will have got um, additional funding from us last year and this year uh, to, in essence, employ additional community workers. Now, I, I was trying to get detail before I came online in terms of how many additional community workers we've uh, resourced uh, in Cork City Partnership, but I haven't got that, so apologies. So. Uh, Overall, nationally, we've provided 10 million euro this year for uh, additional community workers to be employed to work directly with, with Ukrainians. Uh, and the second kind of big program, I suppose, that we support that's of relevance uh, is the volunteer centres. And we would have also provided extra, not as much as with SICAP, uh, supports to them last year and this year as well uh, to provide more, more staff to, to help engage with Ukrainian community. Um, Another structure, I suppose, that was set up last year, um, partly on foot of representations in my department, but also Department of Housing, are what's called Community Response Fora. Uh, so I imagine some of you might be aware of them, but in each local authority area, uh, the local authority is tasked with, on a regular basis, pulling together all relevant statutory, but also community organisations uh, to coordinate their response, basically, uh, to the to the Ukraine crisis. Uh, some local authorities do it better than others. Um, last year, I would have visited a few of them around the country to see how they were operating. I didn't get to visit the one in Cork City. Um, they're all a bit variable in terms of how they work, um, but it is their job to coordinate local service provision in the different local authority areas. Um, so just to put that out there, um, and, and I suppose last year in my role as well and, and into this year, I would have met with, on a regular basis, kind of stakeholder groups that are working on the ground. So, uh, and I still do this meet with Volunteering Ireland, The Wheel, um, 
the Irish Local Development Network and one organisation in Community Community Work Ireland uh, on, a, on a regular basis. Um, and I suppose a significant fund as well that came out of my department late last year but hasn't really started until this year is the Community Recognition Fund. But groups should really be aware of this um, because every local authority has got a sizable allocation under this. And I, uh, I think the deadline for applications is about two weeks away. Uh, so the, 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 this is a potential for localities, local areas around the around the, the country that have seen significant numbers of Ukrainians or indeed international protection applicants over the last 12 months um, to get resources for additional infrastructure in their area. Um, and this would be, I suppose, when I say infrastructure, I don't mean hospitals and schools. I mean low-level infrastructure that local authorities can build, can basically. Uh, it also supports uh, purchase of community cars as well. I, I, can, I can send people a link afterwards if, if they're interested in more information about it. Um, sorry if I'm going into this sort of... Um, siloed way of thinking about everything in terms of programs and funding and funding and so on but we can have a broader discussion afterwards as well i just feel it's important that i name a couple of things up front um uh, and so then some of you will know as well that um just before christmas i was assigned this additional job so basically assisting minister gorman uh, in the department of children as well um and while I'm helping them out where I can, I have some particular delegated functions that are that are worth naming. Um, one, to get the National Action Plan Against Racism completed and launched, and we hope to do that later this month. Another is to develop a new migrant integration strategy. I think that's especially relevant to Ukrainians going forward, and we can talk a little bit more about that uh, later. Uh, and then kind of the third large bit is a new thing called the community engagement function. Um, so many of you will be aware that there are various communities around the country who have hosted accommodation in one way or another. And as time has gone on, it's getting harder to find more accommodation. And the accommodation that we are finding, uh, we need to use it straight away, which leads to situations with people coming into a community with no notice um, and very little preparation and people beginning to ask questions uh, and other people doing things worse than asking questions in terms of protesting outside uh, accommodation centres as well. This has largely happened in the realm of international protection applicants, but it's relevant to the broader role that I have in terms of creating a new community engagement function in the Department of Children. I can talk more about that if you like. That, that new function is still under construction. Uh, mainly because the Department of Taoiseach has got involved and they want to shape how that looks and then eventually they'll hand it back to us uh, and we'll start implementing it. Um, I skipped my third department, Department of Social Protection. Um, I won't go into all my functions there, but there is one particular relevant function uh, that will be of interest to people in that I oversee um, community employment schemes. Uh, so these are on the face of it, there are job activation measures where somebody who's on a job seeker payment gets a slight additional payment uh, on the basis that they they work in a community organization for 19 hours a week. Um, but the big bonus of it is that there's, uh, there's free training uh, that comes with the placement as well. Uh, so for example, English language courses could be provided under a CE scheme as well. I, I mentioned CE schemes because uh, as of next month or as of tomorrow, um, more and more Ukrainians will start to become eligible for community employment schemes uh, because they've accumulated 12 months or more here uh, on a payment. Um, and it's potentially very useful because, as I said, primarily it offers people free training. Free training. Now, you do obviously have to work in the, in the community organization for for uh, 19 hours, um, but it's also a good way in terms of uh, community integration and preparing yourself for the job market as well, which is which was the primary function of community employment initially. Um, so just to put that on people's radar, um, 
Yeah, I, I don't want to talk too much. It might be more useful to have a little bit of over and back, but I suppose there are the three departments and there are the different ways that I'm kind of engaging formally, at least um, in the situation at the moment. Uh, I do try to get around the country a lot as well. I do try to visit projects as much as possible uh, to see what's happening uh, on the ground, especially on the Ukrainian and international protection side of things as well. Um, I was in Cork last year, but it, I think it was before all of this kicked off and I do go down regularly. So, you know, I might I might be able to catch up with you at some stage uh, during the year. But yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. But uh, I mean, there's plenty more I can say, um, on the especially on the accommodation side of things as well and the different strands that are being looked at uh, in terms of short term and, and medium term and so on. Um, but you know, maybe for now I'll leave it at that and we can open it up. I see there's hands up already anyway. Yeah, there's one hand up there. Um, would you, Tanya, would you like to ask Joe now or will we let Hazel have her question in now? I'm sorry, can you please repeat? Um, can we just let Hazel ask a question and then you can ask? Of course, yes, of course, of course. Yes, ask yes. Joe. Okay. Hi, Hazel. I'm very sorry, can I please just slightly add uh, to one of the stated questions, because it's also a bit uncertain if it's possible to put in this uh, part regarding um, payment for food. Uh, it, it was stated that by Hazel that um, it's uh, there are some questions to this or that accommodation who are providing different food, um, and in any case, it should people should pay for it, or sometimes it's free. But uh, people start uh, telling us that some accommodation, for example, you know that uh, the price for food is set for ten euros for adult person and five euros for a kid up to eighteen years old. But some accommodation asked to treat 12 years old uh, child as an adult for payment. So are there any certain, um, like, are hotels and accommodation places uh, can set their own rules with this regard? Or uh, like this, this is uh, the moment which is uncertain for people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> lots of de details, what I would class as some, some of them are kind of technical questions, I won't be able to answer all of them. Um, I, I don't have the answer on the medical card one, I don't know that, uh, but I can I can chase that up. In and the other one is that I'm not 100% sure of, I'm 90% sure of, but I'm not going to say it because you need 100% is on the host family side of things as well. Um, my understanding was that's largely an agreement between the host uh, and and the Ukrainian family. But don't quote me on that. Uh, let me get back to it on that so that you have clarity. Now, on the other points, maybe not satisfactory answers, but the best I can give. So, um, sorry, Hazel's first question in relation to food provision. It will vary all over the place depending on what the contract uh entered into initially was. And as is obvious, we had to run fast. We had to take whatever was going in terms of any accommodation center that was offering. So there's lots of different types of contracts. There were lots of different types of contracts in terms of food provision uh, signed up to last year, depending on what the place was able to do and so on and so forth. However, I suppose to partly answer Tanya's question as well, there is a move to have the offering more consistent overall. And so you will see a change, but you will, the object, the overall object is, is that it becomes more consistent so that you'll hear less and less stories of people having different offerings in the accommodation that they're in. Um, just to say, I, I don't have delegated functions over, over the accommodation. So I don't know it in as much detail as Minister Gorman or, or his or his staff might, but I'm after learning a fair bit in the last couple of months. So I should be of some help. Um, on the social welfare payment side of things, Hazel, I mean, what I'd say is people's social welfare payment is tailored to their individual circumstances. And like in a previous life, I would have dealt with people on a one-to-one -one basis who were engaging with the social welfare system and very often thought that someone in the same circumstance as them was getting a different payment, but almost invariably the circumstances differed in one way or another. That said, 
uh, if people are short, there is a problem. It could be that they're not getting everything they're entitled to. And just as a sort of a fail safe, uh, I would say people are always entitled to apply for an additional needs payment. Um, that's, that's a very short answer now in terms of what I'm able to give tonight without being able to dig into people's personal circumstances, but they're just some kind of general reactions. Um, contracts may expire. In your third question, yes, people are no doubt living um, in accommodation at the moment where the contracts are due to expire. Um, it is obviously our intention to try to keep them contracts renewed in general, and this is just a general overarching statement, most of the service accommodation contracts that we have for, for, for Ukrainians are tending to roll over and continue. That's a general statement. So there will be situations where they don't. Um, the provider very often doesn't tell us till late in the day as well as to whether they're renewing or not. Uh, so I know that can be an issue, obviously, for people who've settled in. Um, your question, can people move accommodation? Generally, no. I mean, uh, we're, we're, I suppose we're under pressure to find accommodation at all for people at the moment. Um, I, I wouldn't rule it out, though, if there is like exceptional circumstances. So like if there is a family accommodated in Donegal and half their family is in Wexford for whatever reason, you know, I, I would imagine at a case like that could be looked at to bring people closer together in a situation like that. Uh, but my understanding is generally uh, getting moved around in service accommodation. People don't have the option at the moment, unfortunately. Um, giving all bad news here, unfortunately. But um, in terms of English classes and, and ETB, yes, this has come up as an issue. The very issue that you described and that there's basic English language uh, provision. But when you go on to a more advanced level, it's not available. Um, I mean, this is an issue for Simon Harris's department, I'm not passing the book here, but uh, I, I specifically wrote to him and other ministers last year after I had, it was actually after I visited Kerry and visited the community response for in Kerry. And it had been, I think, the third occasion that I had done a county visit and the issue around uh, access to more advanced English language courses was raised. So I said to him last year, I wrote to him formally last year before the budget and said, basically, you need to budget for more English language provision this year. I understand that's been done, but it's not translating yet in terms of what the various ETBs are able to offer. Um, but that's that's a real issue that I recognize. Um, in terms of the social housing thing, no, there isn't. That's a black and white answer at the moment. There's no entitlement to apply for social housing uh, at the moment, unless there are Ukrainians here who have become Irish citizens, and that's a whole different ballgame. Um, um, what the plan is medium to long term hasn't been decided yet. Um, so that's, sorry, that's a quick sort of superficial enough answer to some questions there, which are which are ultimately the full answers are, are more detailed than what I can give um, on the spot. But happy if you want to, either of you want to email me more and I, and I can come up with something more comprehensive. Tanya, do you have another question or does everyone, anyone else have a question? No, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. I, I mean, we, we had a meeting today with e, ETB in Cork and um, the difficulties getting tutors is actually huge. So, and, yeah. and it takes, it, it's very um, protracted. The actual system of getting them employed is very difficult, but I think Simon Harris is working with the ETB. It, 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 yeah, it, he's it, aware it, of it. And like, it's, it tends to be the issue. Sorry, Tanya, to cut across. It tends to be the issue with, a bunch of public services at the moment. I mean, we've put money behind them, but the difficulty is getting um, getting the people. The country is growing faster than we can keep pace with, I think, in terms of public services at the moment. Yeah. Tanya, you were just about to say something. Just, just a comment Sorry. that at the same time, they are very, very helpful. Like uh, they are offering a lot of options. For example, all our uh, teachers less, who provide English classes and uh, other activities, our psychologists, they are working with us on a volunteer basis, so they do not receive uh, wages for uh, supporting us. And in these, uh, sometimes it's very, very difficult to find a teacher who will support this or that course. And in this particular case, it is very, very helpful because we are applying for them to uh, receive some uh, hours 
uh, as a grant is grant hours uh, and uh, they uh, help us to find and uh, the support in this tutor uh, and we as organization can transfer this class to this course to people to ukrainians people so uh, they, their help is very important for us yes Great, great. Uh, um, Oliver, you have your hand up. Thanks, Louise, and, and thanks, Joe, and thanks, Talia. Um, very, very useful and, 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 and good discussion so far um, and very insightful. Thanks, everyone. Um, I, I have a question, Joe. You mentioned the Community Recognition Fund um, and just in, in my own local area committee yesterday, it, it was put on our agenda in AOB. Um, and there was a discussion on the kind of things that, that it can be used for. Um, I, I, I think there's potential for it to be very positive, uh, but we were trying to get a kind of a sense of the scope of it and, and what kind of things uh, we should be looking at. Uh, there was a debate over whether we should go for you know, one or two big things or, or, or many small things, um, and, and what would be kind of the, the reaction of, of the department one way or another, depending on what, what we asked for. So we, we were trying to get a, a sense really of, of what, ye were expecting uh, local authorities to use it for um, and if, if you could give an idea of, of kind of you know, the vision that, that the department had for it so that we could kind of reflect on that and, and, and in our own deliberations. Thanks Louise. Okay what, what I might do here while we're here is I'll try and find a link and drop it in it's got a rough list but um, it would be infrastructure that the local authority can deliver uh, this year or next year so it's kind of speed uh, one of the stipulations also is that communities are consulted so communities are asked so community engagement has to be um, proven in other words it can't be w one or two officials or one or two councillors pet project that doesn't have a basis in what the community wants so I, a lot of the initial logic for it was that it's something that the community wants that they haven't got to date and it's a bit of a a recognition, I suppose, in terms of other pressures that might be on the infrastructure in the community, that uh, infrastructure that takes longer to build up, I suppose. Um, playgrounds is one that's often touted. Um, enhancements to community centres. Uh, let me see if I can get it here now. And um, uh, and just just while you're pulling that, I, I, yeah. I, and maybe you're teasing through it here now. Um, like, is it specific? Oliver, you're frozen. Sorry. Is everyone else okay? <laughs> I thought it was my end when I started using my <laughs> when I started using a, another function there. I'll just see, I'll look for, I'll look on a different device in case it kills it again. Uh, I I'll, I'll try the question again. So it, it is the question Useful. is is it is it things that are in response to the to the Ukrainian crisis or is it you know the needs that have always existed in the community and this is an opportunity no. uh, to, to provide them it's the, it's yeah it's the second one yeah it's it's the second one it's it's the needs that have always existed and have been proven uh, and that's um and that you can easily write up and submit in the next four weeks basically there's a big delay on this sorry Is it going into the chat or? Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm not going to put it into the chat because I'm worried about my Wi-Fi here. If I actually open another web page, will it actually crash? Well, but I, I can. It's not difficult to find on Google if you put in a community recognition fund, you'll get it. I can read it out here very briefly. Um, so uh, types of project eligible for funding are development enhancement or refurbishment of community or cultural facilities, including play areas, walkways, parks, uh, gardens, recreational areas, development enhancement or refurbishment of local club and sports facilities, um, enhancement to school or parish facilities, which are open to use by all of the community, uh, purchase of equipment for local clubs, festivals, community events and organizations, music, arts or sports equipment, 
transport infrastructure, such as the purchase of community vehicles, um, bus shelters or information boards. And the final point is purchase and refurbishment of buildings and or purchase and or purchase of land for the development of community facilities, such as play areas, multi-use games areas, uh, gardens, etc. So. So it's very, it's very open to local communities. It is very, is very open, but I, I, I know from internally in the departments, they want good proposals that show that it's the community that wants it, that there has been an engagement with the community as well. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I would, if you've got, if you've got a big proposals that have a good solid backing and are well written up, don't hesitate uh to, to throw them in you know because there's a fair bit of money there i think there'll be some come next year as well okay now does anyone else have a question or tanya yeah yes first. if if i'm not interrupting anybody else um do i just um i understood that uh probably accommodation is not the part which should be addressed to you uh, but any chance just to stress this issue and if uh, it will be uh, announced, I would be already happy. Um, regarding accommodation for people with special needs, uh, because we faced some situation recently, like uh, it was um, a family uh, with two people on wheels. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm right. Yes, on chair wheels. Uh, and the problem is that they were in City West uh, and only one hotel all around uh the whole ireland could accept them uh, and uh, the situation is or that uh no other place uh where these people with these special needs can be put and actually these rooms are all, already occupied and if such situation would occur one again once again I, i'm not sure the people can uh be put into their suitable place for them so any options to consider uh, some special accommodation for people who uh, need special care or special uh, looking after okay um i feel free to, to ask me accommodation questions but with the caveat i put earlier on is that I, I'm, I'm not directly over the accommodation, so I don't know everything and I, I won't be able to answer every question on the spot. But as I said earlier on as well, feel free to email me the questions as well and I can find more accurate and detailed answers on the accommodation side. Um, so in terms of that specific issue raised there, maybe people with disabilities who, who you say are only getting accommodated in one hotel, um, I. I I don't know, I can't verify that or not. I'd be a bit surprised that there's only one hotel in all that we've got, because we've got, I think, um, we've got in, in the region of the 700 different locations where where people are being ac accommodated. Uh, it would surprise me that there's only one uh, that's able to cope with wheelchairs. Um, but I do know that um, Ukrainians are spending one, one night in City West maximum. So they are going somewhere. Um, but as I said earlier on as well, in terms of the option side of things, uh, people don't really have options, but I would, I would imagine that efforts are made to accommodate people appropriately if they're, if they're in a wheelchair. Um, I, I can find out more about that if you like, in terms of where, where people are being sent. I, I find it difficult to believe that there's only one hotel that can, can accommodate people because hotels are bound by um, equality legislation here in terms of uh, accessibility. It's it's on, all information I got from Cork City Council. Like uh, there, uh, the people were put through this. Uh, actually, the hotel in which I'm uh, staying now. So I uh, I hope the information I received was like a proper one. So and uh, the problem is they were put to Limerick first, and then they uh, due to not like good condition for themselves for, for them they were come back to city west and after several days there the only one place uh, which was uh, founded for them uh, was our hotel so well uh, probably free like i mean there are a lot of places av were available but only free uh, hours was um probably it's it, more it about could be at a particular point in time when when they needed accommodation 
probably Sorry. it's like cir circumstances, but uh, in any case, my, my question was more like, uh, would it be chance to uh, to set special places in any case, like uh, for with, with with somebody who can uh, look after them there? But again, this question is not to you. Understand this? Yeah, I, I I'm guessing the circumstance you described was one particular case at a point in time where the staff in City West could only locate one hotel on that particular night. Um, I, I, as I said earlier on, I would have thought every hotel, at least theoretically in the country, should be able to accommodate people that are in a wheelchair. Um, I think you have an additional question there though, in terms of support staff as well. I, I, I think that would probably then link in to the community response for who should be linking the people up with the relevant support services in the area as well. The HSE should sit on uh, the local community response for where, where someone is. Um, now, whether, and I have no doubt there are probably people in some situations who need a support person to travel with them from City West to wherever they're going. Uh, to what degree that happens, I, I, I don't know. I'm not over the detail of that, uh, but I can find out more if you want to drop me a line. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um. If there's a lull, can I just ask something? <laughs> um, as part of the your plan against racism, Joe, um, mm. what can be done to prevent the awfulness of the protests outside houses and outside accommodation centres? Oh, wow, well, that's a big question. Um, uh, look, on, on the plus side, there is, I suppose, actions happening slowly um, at a government level. So in the Department of Taoiseach, there, there are two things being looked at at the moment. One of them is um, that project I mentioned earlier, the development of a community engagement model um, that will, I suppose, in a better way, prepare communities for a new accommodation centre that's happening and do work to help the community engage with the residents that arrive as well. That will help to some extent. Uh, but then also there's a separate project happening in the Department of Taoiseach's around a public communication message, um, recognizing the fact that a lot of what's floating around on social media at the moment is inaccurate and scaremongering and very problematic. Um, so there's a strategy being developed in terms of how we counter that and counter uh, the misinformation as well. Uh, I think when that comes on stream, it will help. Um, I still think, unfortunately, we're in a place where you're still going to get a minority of people who will still protest outside uh, accommodation where people where people are staying. Uh, I, I, I don't know if we can obliterate that 100 um, percent because some people you can't uh, turn or change or um, help see the light, I think. But I think we can improve it quite a bit from where it is now. Um, so there, I mean, they're, they're the two general sort of pillars that we're, we're, we're planning on. We don't have them set up yet. I wish we did. They're moving much slower than I would like them to. Um, but on the plus side, it is the Department of Taoiseach that's pushing them, which means, um, you know, they will be resourced and um, they will have whole of government backing as well. But it just takes a little bit more time when it's in the Department of Taoiseach. Um, so they're the two general ways how we, we're going to try to counter that. Okay. Um, anyone else with any ideas? <laughs> and just to say on a broader level as well, uh, I'll see it as part of my job for the next two years, we'll say, being optimistic, um, that um, you know I will be going to communities and I have started doing this already, seeing where um, those communities are engaging well with protection applicants, be they from Ukraine or other countries and using them examples and trying to spread that out a bit wider. So for example, um, I was in Tipperary a couple of weeks ago where um, people in Ross Cray and Boris Akain, the community groups there are, are working very well with the people that are living in the accommodation centers there. And I'm going to use some of the examples that they, that they have been, or some of the models that they've been using to try and push them out uh, at a more national level as well. So for example, the men's shed in Ross Cray are running a really good project that I think could, could be replicated uh, across the country. 
Right. Right. Um, we're hoping to get a women's shed going, Tanya, in Blackpool. <laughs> so, um, Tanya, how do you feel about your welcome here, generally, from Irish people? Uh, for me, uh, all experience connected with uh, welcoming of Ukrainian people here, actually, for me, it's amazing. I never heard and never saw negative. Probably, probably, uh, I believe that... Um, I can avoid some places where it it, it could be, uh, but uh, all people and all groups and all communities I met and uh, I was involved in, uh, I felt only support. Like, yes, uh, if speaking about some, you know, if going uh, more deeper, for example, some posts in Facebook, some comments, some um, networks, which uh, you is uh, used by individuals, who like probably in some way um, feel influence of a huge amount of Ukrainians in Ireland. Probably if go deeper, uh, you could uh, read some uh, negative uh, reaction on this or that, like um, house crisis, etc. Yes, a lot of information I'm sure you're aware about. Uh, but if in general speaking, uh, as for me, I never met negative. I'm never, I'm all connected with uh, Irish people locally and all around uh, Ireland, I felt only like positive and support from them. So probably I'm not the right person to, to, to give you examples of uh, my negative experience. That's great. That's really good. Yeah, that's good. Only once, it's only once was situation when um, sometimes people like once, one man, he's a blogger, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. He came to hotel and was trying to make some Comprimative video uh, record, um, but again, I understand the direction of these people. We we have to respect uh, those people to whom we came, to whom, like, we changing. Like people, uh, Ukrainian people uh, arrived in Ireland, and we did change uh, life of local people in this or that way, uh, and uh, I respect other people. So. It's like, we came here, we need to play your rules. Uh, so for me, it's very understandable if any negative reaction uh, is seen. Thank you, that's very good. I'm sure- uh, I mean- uh, Sorry, Joe, yeah. Go on, Joe, yeah. No, sorry to cut in. No, I I, I mean, and, and it's hard if, if you spend any bit of time on, on social media looking at the wrong people or the wrong pages, it, it's hard to accept that the fact, I think, that by and large, the community response across Ireland has been un unbelievably positive. Um, and, and those that protest and those that post rubbish on, on social media are very much in the minority, but they too do tend to get, I suppose, um, amplified. Uh, because of the nature of social media and because of the nature of mainstream media who you know are obviously drawn to, to negative stories it's it's not going to make the front page of the Irish Times or the RT website that the community response across the country in general remains extremely strong uh, it's just not that newsworthy anymore the negative stuff just tends to get more clicks you know so that's that's we have to we have to battle against that a little bit on on a number of fronts really but uh, by and large in terms of where we are uh, it's it's still a good place uh, but that's not glossing over uh, where there's uh, there's still an increasing number of flashpoints that we have to get on top of as soon as we as soon as we can yeah yeah is there anything the the, the ordinary person can do just um in addition to what we're doing already, you know, can you think of anything, either of you? I'm very slow to ask anyone to do anything additional because I do genuinely think uh, that the, the response has been quite good, especially anyone who's engaged in a community group. Um, but, you know, the normal conversations, uh, uh, and I think this is where it's particularly dangerous over the last couple of months, where reasonable people start falling into using the, the tropes that are online as well in terms of you know male asylum seekers in particular and all sorts of all the fear mongering around that i mean these people are coming to the country looking for protection and there's no evidence of all the kind of negative the negative sort of assumptions that are being attached to them as well um 
and I, you know if you're having a conversation and stuff like that drops in i don't know try to just maybe politely question the validity of it or the veracity of it and whether facebook is a really good um source to um to to build your opinions from you know um uh, but but in general i i, I would I wouldn't be inclined to ask more uh, from anyone in a community group that's been helping in one way or another. I, I suppose we do hope in government to be able to give people more tools to do that in a, in a way that kind of brings the country together a little bit more in terms of the community engagement model, but in particular that, that communications campaign as well. So you will be seeing stuff on social media uh, that uh, contains facts uh, and attempts to address some of the misinformation there as well. So when that comes, you know, please share it. Okay, thank you, thank you. I was just about to wrap up and now we've got two hands up. John. <laughs> uh, th thanks, Louise, and thanks, uh, Tanya and Joe. Um, I'm actually working in a youth organization right in the city centre in Cork, Tanya, and uh, YMCA Cork, YMCA Ireland. Um, and we're also, we're already working with, with some Ukrainian young people. So I suppose what I'm saying is, um, I, I'll put my contact details in the chat. So if you want to reach out, like we're doing a lot of varied youth work in the city. Um, so if there are some Ukrainian young people, 15 to about 22, um, you know, if you want to talk to me, reach out to me. Um, we can try and find a pathway to, we're already working with a few people, good few people. We worked with a huge group last year and we'd like to do it again. So look, I'll put my contact details in the chat. Um, reach out to me. We can have a conversation. Come in and visit us someday, and kind of build a bit of a bit more of a bridge between the two organisations to to help some of the Ukrainian young people who probably are already around the city centre anyway. Um, and there's lots of opportunities for them just to drop in, have a cup of tea. There's music. There's youth. You know, youth spaces. There's a lot of opportunities there. So I just want to um, just make that offer directly to you. And I'll put I'll put my email and. Uh, work number in the chat there so reach out to me if you if you if you choose to do so okay and thanks for your contribution thank you very much no problem thanks john liz would you like to... yeah hi and um, thanks for your presentations um so i'm right down in bantry in west cork and um we've got lots of ukrainian um single people and families down there and i mean i think that on the whole it's going really well but um, I do get a lot of comments. I work in a couple of different charity shops and um, I get a lot of comments from some of the population, general population that are quite um, verging on being racist and unpleasant. And I usually sort of say, oh, well, you know, this Ukrainian lady regularly comes into the shop and she's really nice. And I sort of, you know, just talk about the positives of, of, of the Ukrainian people that I've met. So that's, that, that's how I deal with that. And I had an idea that, a bit like what John just said, actually, that, but if there was something like that for adults almost, that there was a, um, a community cafe or something where people could go, could pop in and have a cup of tea or say every, I don't know, Thursday evening or Thursday afternoon or whenever, whatever time suited, that, that, that the Ukrainian people could come and, 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 and share food and drink and whatever. And, um, then if you came across somebody who was being really, really negative, you could sort of say, well, why don't you come along with me to this cafe on this afternoon and come and meet them? They're lovely people. And I think you could very quickly change their minds. So that's just just an idea from me. But um, I don't quite know how to go about that. OK. Can, can I comment, please? Uh, Actually, it's, it's really a good idea and more communication with Irish people and Ukrainian people are needed. It's, it's really so. Um, we still have problem of language barrier. We should admit it, yes. Uh, probably also due to this problem, there are some misunderstanding uh, like the one you described. Uh, one of our charity organization plan uh, for uh, next half a year to uh, start running, uh, we called it like Ukrainian club. Uh, it will um, run by Ukrainian people for Irish people who are interested in uh, Ukrainian culture. Uh, for example, it, it's a way to understand the culture, a way to understand people better. 
Of course, you absolutely uh, right that probably only those people who positively uh, treat Ukrainians will join this club. Yes, probably those who have some negative feelings, probably they won't uh, pay attention to, to this or that club, but probably the first step in any case. There's a lot of similarities. There's a great music culture <laughs> in the two cultures. <laughs> Some great singers in Blackpool. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the real. <laughs> um, we we I, we need to invite you formally, Mr. Minister Joe, to to Blackpool <laughs> and come and come and see our community centre and and Razem's office and hub as well. We we really invite you and please. Uh, take this chance to visit Cork <laughs> and <laughs> go into our both places. Yeah, no, no, I'll get there. I, I, I would suggest actually writing formally because there's a system inside where I, ha I have a list of um, visit requests. Um, but um, I, I usually get through all the Cork ones anyway, I can tell you that much. <laughs> we are waiting for you. <laughs> right, we'll write officially to you. <laughs> well, that's great, folks. Oh, oh, John was just clapping. That's a good, uh, just the difference between the clap and the thing. Um, and, uh, oh, post the meeting, uh, Rory would like to offer a tour for Ukrainian groups at a much discounted rate. Is that on your boat? Uh, oh yeah, I don't know. But anyway, we'll pass on the message, Rory. Um, is that it now? Oliver, do you have any little wrapping up words to say? Yeah, none. I just again, look. Thanks very much, Joe and, and, and Tanya. Um, it, it, just so people know, it was it was last week. I contacted both Joe and Tanya, and and um, you know, in the context of seeing the the one year anniversary of the unprovoked invasion uh, was coming up, um, and just to thank you both very much for for giving your time this evening. I, I Tanya, especially, um, it, it it's great to hear directly from the, you know, a member of the Ukrainian community about the welcome and about the issues that you're facing um, and, and what we can all do. So thank you very much for, for your time tonight. Thank you very much for your uh, will to hear it. Thank you very much for organizing this event. Well, it, was, it was a pleasure to hear you. And Rory is still putting out cultural trips down in West Cork on a boat. So <laughs> get in touch if you need to. Thank you so much, Joe and Tanya, and everybody with their Thanks, interest. everyone. Thanks, Tanya. Thanks very, Thank you very much. See you again. Bye bye. 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 bye.